Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Director of Programming for Comic-Con International, Mr. Eddie Ibrahim. Hey everybody, how you doing? Oh, come on, let's hear some enthusiasm. It's still early in the day. There we go. All right, I have, to, I have to let you guys know that I am very excited about this panel, and I'm hoping you guys are too. So, I can tell you that there are two gentlemen who will be coming out that are within earshot, so maybe we can let them know how excited we are to see this one. All right, let's get it started with, uh, with no more, inter no more <laughs> announcements or anything. It's my pleasure to inter introduce Jeff Jensen with EW for the Visionary Panels with J.J. Abrams and Joss Whedon. Thanks for coming. Our guests today need little introduction to any of you in this room. Their combined fantasy worlds alone could inspire a four-day con fan convention and proverbial pop culture Mardi Gras. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Angel. Firefly. Dollhouse. Dr. Horrible, sing along long. Felicity. A A alias. Lost. Maybe we should just save the applause for the end. It's a really long resume. Fringe. Mission Impossible. Cloverfield. And Star Trek. These are the signature works of Joss Whedon and J.J. Abrams, but their creative fingerprints have been all over the pop culture of the past 20 years as they have contributed to all sorts of entertaining joyrides, toy stories, and fun time Armageddon in movies, television, and yes, even comic books. They produce, write, direct, make music, and have been known to act, and they, like you, are fans. Their work has been inspired by the passion they have for the stories of their youth, and their influences continue to inspire their current work, which is helping to lead us into the future of entertainment. Don't you think it would be cool if, like, J.J. Abrams and Joss Whedon, like, teamed up and, like, made a movie or a TV show? Well, they're not. But I say we bring them out here and bully them into it. Please welcome to the stage J.J. Abrams and Joss Whedon. Drew Goddard, he told me to say that. Um, before we get into sort of like the, uh, the, the questions, um, just to let you know, we will have time for questions from you guys. So we'll, we're going to leave that toward the end. Um, you guys have uh, been to, to Comic-Con many times. Uh, you guys are big fans of the things that you love. What's the most extreme thing that you guys have done in the name of fandom and, and in your entire pop culture consuming life? JJ, do you want to take that one? The most extreme thing? Yeah. Or, uh, I, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I would I would send fan letters to, to people that I love, but usually they were not actors or directors. They were usually like the makeup people. So like I, I sent letters to, like Dick Smith and Tom Savini, and Dick Smith did like The Exorcist, and and he was one of the one of the greats. And he sent me uh, the tongue from The Exorcist. 
in a box. I was like 14. And I opened up this box, and there was a tongue, an extension with a note, a handwritten note that said, put some peanut butter in it, stick it in. And, it, and my mom was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> she was so... But, uh, so I, that was mostly my, my fandom. Do you still have the tongue? Oh, yeah. You did? I did. I should have brought the tongue. Uh, you should. Shit. Jocks? I, 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 there's no way I could top the tongue. I got... I don't... I don't uh... You have nothing better than the tongue? No. I do have an alien egg. Um, but I had to bury the franchise in order to get it. <laughs> when did you guys decide that you wanted to be storytellers? What was the inspiration that made you want to do what you guys do today? Um, I decided that J.J. wanted to be a storyteller when he was just a lad, a young lad. Um, I always wanted to be a storyteller. There's never been any doubt. I had no idea what form that would take. I just knew I couldn't make an honest living because that sounded hard. And I just felt, you know, I had these universes in my head. I didn't study writing, and I didn't... I knew I wanted to make films. Probably that was what it was going to be. Um, but uh, but I, and I knew I'd create them, but I didn't really think about writing them. And then when I started to write television specs, because I actually needed to eat food and live under a roof, um, that's when I realized, oh my God, writing is, and will always be, the thing by which I define myself. I think that for me, it was uh, when I was a kid, I, I, I was, and I guess still am, the idiot who loved to do magic tricks for my relatives. So I was just always doing things, and they would be like, oh, wow, that was amazing, you know, and try and convince me they were amazed. But it, it was sort of that, I guess, that feeling of uh, creating an illusion and, and making people believe something was real that they didn't expect. And since I didn't really want to become a professional magician, uh, although I'm certainly debating it still, uh, the idea, sort of writing seems, I guess, like a filmmaking. It was a sort of a natural progression and uh, another option to do sort of the same thing in a different way. Now, I, I just want to, not to bring up Drew Goddard again, but he and Brian K. Vaughan were having an argument about whether comic book nerds or magic nerds were more pathetic. And I'm, I'm you know, where do you stand on that? Are you, where, uh, well, I mean, the honest answer is, I could, you could make a joke, I could say magic nerds, you know, but uh, I think, honestly, that neither are really pathetic, but I, I think really magic nerds. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brian also wore a cape. When he did his, did you wear a cape? I didn't wear a cape. Okay, wear a cape. then you're cool. And I always wanted a top hat. Never had one of those. Okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking of being a comic book nerd, Joss, you have. Should, should we wake everyone up first? Wake up! Sorry. No, no, no. I was just kidding. I didn't know if we'd bored you to death. Sorry. No, they're into it. They're totally into magic nerd stories.